All right, so we've got some practice problems here that we're gonna do. The first one says potassium chlorate decomposes into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Now, I did go ahead and write the balanced equation here for you, but please be aware that we are going to advance to the point where you are going to have to write the balanced equation on your own, um, and that kind of brings in our last two units as well as last semester to kind of pull all of our chemistry knowledge together. So the first question says, how many moles of oxygen are produced when three moles of potassium chlorate decompose completely? Well, the first step is to identify what you're given and identify those materials in the balanced equation. So we have three moles of potassium chlorate. So identify that first in the chemical equation. We want to find how many moles of oxygen there are. So identify that in the chemical equation. So identify what you're given, identify what you want to find, and then from there you can build a conversion factor. Well, remember that we can um, read a chemical reaction in the format that it tells us how many moles are being used. So in the case of this chemical reaction, we have three moles of oxygen that are going to be produced, and we have two moles of KClO3 that are needed in order to produce that much. So that's actually the conversion factor, the relationship that we can use. So we always start with what we're given. In this case, we are given three moles of potassium chlorate. We begin with that, and we're gonna multiply that by the relationship or the conversion factor that we now know we want to use. Please remember that the unit that we are given has to be on the bottom. So since we are given moles of potassium chlorate, we're gonna put moles of potassium chlorate on the bottom of our conversion factor. And according to our balanced reaction, we have two moles of potassium chlorate. On the top of our conversion factor, we're going to place the unit that we want. In this case, we want moles of oxygen. And according to our balanced equation, we um, have three moles of oxygen that are going to be produced. So now that we have our conversion factor and everything set up mathematically, we can go ahead and multiply and solve for this reaction. Notice how our moles of potassium chlorate cancel with the moles of potassium chlorate given in the chemical reaction so that our answer is in moles of oxygen. I will post in another color as well the cross multiply method also. Go ahead and calculate your answer and then you can unpause the video to see if you got the same thing as me. So mathematically, you can see we're gonna do three times three divided by two, which is nine divided by two, which means you are going to need 4.5 moles of oxygen. All right, let's take a look at the next problem. So we have butane and it's undergoing combustion. You will need to balance this in the future, but right now I do have it balanced for you. According to this reaction, remember that the coefficients in front tell us how many moles are reacting. So we have two moles of butane, and that's going to require 13 moles of oxygen. And when those combust, you get eight moles of carbon dioxide and, and 10, 10 moles, moles of, of water. water. So, so the, question the question says, says how, how many, many grams, grams of carbon, of carbon dioxide, dioxide are produced? Are produced? When, when you have, you have 88, 88 grams, grams of oxygen, of oxygen reacting, reacting with, with an, an excess, excess of butane. butane. All that All means that mean for excess of butane is that you've got plenty of butane that you're not going to run short, that you're going to have enough to react with all 88 grams of oxygen. So here's what we have to do. We need to first pick out what we're given and what we need to find. So we are given 88 grams of oxygen, and so I'm going to highlight that, and I'm going to highlight oxygen on my... Um, paper so that I know exactly what it is that I'm given and I want to find how many grams of carbon dioxide so I'm gonna label those now I need to create a conversion factor that includes grams of oxygen and grams of carbon dioxide based on what the chemical reaction tells me will happen well remember this chemical reaction tells me that I'm gonna have 13 moles of oxygen so I need grams of oxygen so I'm gonna to have to figure out how many grams of oxygen are 13 moles. So my first step is one mole of oxygen. Well, one mole of oxygen is 32 grams. Now I'm gonna take that 32 grams and I'm gonna multiply it by 13 because I don't just need one mole, I need 13 moles. 
So that's going to give me 416 grams of oxygen. So that tells me according to this reaction, I am required to use 416 grams of oxygen. Now I need to find out how many grams of carbon dioxide are produced. So I need to figure out, well, according to my reaction, it says eight moles of carbon dioxide. So first I need to figure out how much one mole of carbon dioxide weighs. Well, oxygen is 16 times two of them, which would be 32, plus carbon, which is 12.011. So that means one mole of carbon dioxide weighs 44.011 grams. But remember, according to this reaction, it says eight moles are reacting. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take 44.01 and I'm gonna multiply that by eight. So that tells me that for this chemical reaction, I would have 352.088 grams of carbon dioxide getting produced. So now that I know how many grams of oxygen are reacting with how many grams of carbon dioxide, I can turn that into a conversion factor. So I always begin with what I'm given. I'm given 88 grams of oxygen. I'm gonna put on my conversion factor on the bottom, I'm gonna put my grams of oxygen because I don't want grams of oxygen anymore. So I'm gonna put my 416 grams of oxygen. On the top, I'm gonna put the unit that I want. I want to find how many grams of carbon dioxide are produced. So I'm gonna put the 352.088 grams of oxygen or carbon dioxide on the top. Now I can go ahead and solve for this problem. So pause here and see if you can solve for how many grams of carbon dioxide would be produced. Also, I will put in another color underneath the cross multiply method so that you can see what the setup would look like. Your math ends up the same as usual. So if you calculated correctly, you should get that you would have 74 0.65 grams of oxygen. Okay, so on this problem it says water decomposes into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas by electrolysis. And we have our balanced equation already written for us. Remember that the balanced equation tells us that we have two moles of water breaking down and producing two moles of hydrogen gas and one mole of oxygen gas. So Number six says, how many grams of hydrogen will be produced? So that's our unknown. That's what we want to find, is our grams of hydrogen. We are told that we have six moles of oxygen. So remember, first of all, that the balanced equation tells us how many moles we have. So in this particular equation, it tells us that we have one mole of oxygen. But we are starting with six moles of oxygen. We want to know how many grams of hydrogen are produced. Now remember that this equation tells us two moles of hydrogen. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, because I need grams of hydrogen, I'm going to figure out how many grams of hydrogen that would be according to the reaction. So I know that one mole of hydrogen I can figure out the mass of. So I look on my periodic table and I see that the mass of hydrogen is 1.01, .01, but remember that hydrogen is a diatomic molecule. And so its mass of one mole is going to be 2.02 grams. Now, this equation does say that we have two moles of it. So that means in terms of our number of grams that we need, we are going to need two times the molar mass. So for two moles of hydrogen, that's going to be 4.04 .04 grams. So now I can set everything up. I start with what I'm given. I'm given six moles of oxygen, and I'm going to multiply that times a conversion factor of a relationship that I can determine by looking at the balanced equation of how many moles of oxygen are going to produce how many grams of hydrogen. So it says that there is one mole of oxygen. So since that's what I'm starting with, that's going to go on the bottom. So one mole of oxygen goes on the bottom, and I want to find out my grams of hydrogen. Well, according to my balanced equation, I figured out that two moles of hydrogen has a mass of 4.04 .04 grams. So now I have my conversion factor. I have six moles of oxygen times 4.04 .04 grams of hydrogen on the top, because that's what I want to find is my grams of hydrogen, and one mole of oxygen on the bottom, because that's what I no longer want. My conversion factor is what I'm multiplying by, and my conversion factor is the information that I find by looking at my balanced equation. 
when I solve for this, I get 24.24 grams of hydrogen. If we look at number seven, now we're looking at some different materials. It says how many grams of water are required to produce nine grams of hydrogen. So this time I'm starting with my nine grams of hydrogen. Well, I already know according to my balanced equation how many grams of hydrogen are gonna be produced. We figured that out in the last problem. So that's gonna go on the bottom because I don't want grams of hydrogen anymore. So 4.04 .04 grams of hydrogen is what it says is going to be produced in my balanced equation. Now what goes on the top? Well, I wanna find out my grams of water. But my balanced equation only tells me two moles of water. So that means I'm gonna to have to figure out how much does two moles of water weigh because I wanna know grams of water. So one mole of water weighs 18.02 grams. I'm gonna multiply that times two because I have two moles of water. So two moles of water, according to my balanced equation, I'm gonna need 36.04 grams of water. That's gonna go on the top of my conversion factor. So now I can go ahead and solve my problem. Nine times 36.04, divide that by 4.04, .04, and I get 80.28 grams of water is what I'm going to be needing. All right, so we are going to first make sure that our equation is balanced. You are going to have to write equations yourself. You are going to have to balance them. So cobalt, I have one cobalt going in. I have one cobalt coming out. I'm good there. Chlorine, I have two chlorines going in. I have two chlorines coming out. I'm good there. And I have two fluorine atoms going in and two fluorine co atoms coming out. So this balanced equation actually tells us that every single material we just need one mole of. So we need one mole of cobalt 2 fluoride to react with, or chloride, to react with um, fluoride. And that is going to produce one mole of cobalt fluoride and one mole of chlorine. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to pick out what we're given and what we need to find. So we are given 290.8 grams of cobalt fluoride. So that's gonna be the COF2. And then we need to find out how many grams of fluorine are we going to need. So since this is giving us grams and we need to find grams, we're gonna need to look at our balanced equation to figure out um, how many grams this would be. Well, according to the balanced equation, we need one mole of fluorine. Well, how much does one mole of fluorine weigh? Well, if I look at my periodic table, fluorine has a mass of 18.998. I'm gonna round that to 19. So one mole of fluorine is gonna have a mass of 38 grams. Then I need to look at my cobalt two fluoride. Well, cobalt has a mass of 58.933. And I need to add two fluorine atoms to that, which each one is about 19 grams. So my cobalt fluoride weighs about 96.933 grams. And it says that I just need one mole of it. So because this balanced equation just is a one mole to one mole to one mole, I've got my masses ready to go. So I start with what I'm given. I'm given 290.8 grams of cobalt fluoride. Since I don't want cobalt fluoride, it's gonna go on the bottom. Well, I need one mole of it, and I know from my calculations just now that one mole is 96.33 grams, and so that cancels out. And on the top, I wanna find grams of F2. Well, according to my balanced equation, I need one mole of F2, and one mole of F2 weighs 38 grams. So I've got 290.8 grams. I'm gonna multiply that by my number on top, which is 38, and then I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna divide it by my mass of cobalt fluoride of 96.933, and I should get, I'm going to need about 114 grams of fluoride fluorine in order to react with, um, in order to make 290.8 grams of cobalt 2 fluoride. All right, so this one is balanced for you. 
Um, it says, what is the mass of strontium chloride that reacts with 300 grams of sulfuric acid? So again, we're going to make sure that we're looking at just these two materials. We want to look at sulfuric acid, which is H2SO4, and we want to look at strontium chloride, which is SrCl2. It does give us grams and it wants us to find grams. Well, remember that the balanced equation tells us moles. According to this balanced equation, we have one mole of strontium chloride and one mole of sulfuric acid reacting with each other. We're gonna need to know grams because we're given grams and we wanna find a mass. So let's find the molar mass of sulfuric acid first. One mole of sulfuric acid, if I look on the periodic table, hydrogen is 1.01. Sulfur is 32.066 and oxygen is 16. I'm going to add all of them together, two hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. So one mole of sulfuric acid is 98.09 grams. Well, the reaction just says one mole, so I don't need to do anything. I know how many grams of sulfuric acid. The next is gonna be strontium chloride. So I find the molar mass of strontium chloride, which I find to be 158.52 grams. And again, there is no number in front, so that means just one mole of strontium chloride. So we're gonna start with what we're given. We're given 300 grams of sulfuric acid. So we want the grams of sulfuric acid on the bottom. According to my reaction, one mole is 98.09 grams. So that is what goes on the bottom of my conversion factor. According to the reaction, I need one mole of strontium chloride. Well, I figured out that one mole of strontium chloride has a mass of 158.52 grams. So that's gonna go on the top because that's what I wanna find. So my grams of sulfuric acid cancels out. I take 300, I multiply it by 158.52, I divide it by 98.09, and I find that I need 484.82 grams of strontium chloride if I have 300 grams of sulfuric acid to react with that. Okay, last problem. I do give you the balanced equation. We've got si solid iron, three oxide, Fe2O3, reacting with hydrogen gas to form iron and water. So what we have here is iron oxide, according to our reaction, remember, there's no number in front, so we've got one mole of it, and then we've got three moles of hydrogen that are needed, and from that we're gonna produce two moles of iron and three moles of water. Now let's look at our first problem, number 13. It says how many grams of iron are produced, so we're gonna be working with the Fe that is on our product side, and according, remember it says two moles there, when we have 450 grams of iron three oxide. So we're gonna be over at the F2O3. Now, it does ask for grams and give us grams. And so we're only given moles in the balanced equation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at what I'm given, which is the iron three oxide. So Fe2O3, according to my balanced reaction, I have one mole of it, but I'm given grams of iron three oxide, so I need to know how many grams one mole would weigh. So according to this reaction, I need 159.69 grams of iron two oxide, um, iron, uh, iron three oxide, Fe2O3 because that's how much one mole of it weighs. So I've got that for my conversion factor. That's what's going to go on the bottom because I'm given 450 grams of iron three oxide. So my molar mass of iron three oxide um, is going to go on the bottom. And according to my balanced equation, just one mole of it. Now I need to find my grams of iron. Now I need to be careful here because it does say two moles of iron. So if I look at my periodic table, one mole of iron weighs 55.85 grams. But remember, we've got two moles of iron here. So according to the balanced equation, I need 111.7 grams of iron. And that's because we need two moles of it. So that's what's gonna go on the bottom, or on the top, is 111.7 grams of iron, because that's what I wanna find. So I'm gonna take 450, I'm going to multiply it by 111.7 grams of iron, and then I'm going to divide that by the grams of iron oxide, which was 159.69, and I get 314.77 grams of iron is what I'm going to need 
um, or I'm going to get produced if I start with 450 grams of iron 3 oxide. Now the next problem is giving me moles of hydrogen gas. Well remember the balanced equation tells us how many moles. Well I'm going to start with what I'm given 0 0.155 moles of hydrogen gas and according to my balanced equation I am going to need three moles of hydrogen gas. So that's going to go on the bottom of my conversion factor. But I want to know how many grams of water that's going to produce. Well my balanced equation tells me three moles of water. So I can calculate how much one mole of water weighs. One mole of water weighs 18.02 grams. But I'm going to multiply that by three because remember the balanced equation tells me three moles of hydrogen. So according to my balanced equation, I'm sorry, of water, according to my balanced equation, um, 54.06 grams of water are going to be made. So that's going to go on the top of my conversion factor because that's what I want to find. So I'm going to take my 0 0.155 moles of hydrogen gas. I'm going to divide it by my 3 moles, that is on the bottom, and then I'm going to multiply that by my mass of 3 moles of water, which had a mass of 54.06 grams, and that's going to tell me that I, if I have 0 0.0155 moles of hydrogen gas, that I will produce 0 0.0. 28 grams of water. And if you think about it, that makes sense. I'm going to need three moles of hydrogen gas to make 54.06 grams of water, but I don't even have anywhere close to three moles of water. So I'm not going to make anywhere close to 54 grams of water.